Hey, I'm Org, and in this video I'm going to review the Japanese Tier 2 Cruiser, the Chikuma, which is the best Tier 2 Cruiser currently in the game, at least in my opinion. There were three ships in the Chikuma class, um, these were Japan's last protected cruisers. They were ordered as part of a Japanese vision for a high-speed battle fleet um, centred around the Congo class battle cruisers. But the Chikuma, the Harado and the Yahagi never saw combat. They entered service just before the start of the First World War, and spent the next two decades patrolling hostile or at least unfriendly seas. But it seems like in all this time they never saw combat. They were first tasked with looking for the German East Asian Squadron in the East Indies. However, the Germans were on the other side of the Pacific and then crossed into the Atlantic. And then while the Chikuma was unsuccessfully trying to hunt down the Emden, the other true cruisers were escorting troop convoys from Australia and New Zealand to the Middle East. Uh, the Japanese cruisers would spend much of the First World War patrolling the Pacific and Indian Oceans looking for German commerce raiders or escorting troop convoys, but as I said, don't seem to have ever actually encountered anything. Once the war was over, you might think they would get a break. But Japan was busy trying to support a puppet government in Russia's Far East, so the Harado and the Yahagi were sent to patrol the Pacific coast of Russia in case any Bolshevik ships tried to interfere. Uh, the Chikuma class still didn't get a break when the Japanese pulled out of Russia in 1924. Uh, they were just sent to China, where the Japanese were trying to maintain pressure on the nationalist regime. However, by the time tension turned to conflict, the Chikumas were all back in Japan in reserve and being used as training ships, except for Chikuma which had been destroyed in target practice. In 1940 both Hirado and Yahagi were turned into floating barracks for naval training schools and managed to survive the Second World War to be scrapped. As I said at the start of the video, the Chikuma is the best tier 2 cruiser currently in World of Warships. Um, basically it has a very powerful main armament, and is respectable in every other respect, there's nothing really bad about this ship. It's the main armament that really puts the Chikuma out in front though. When fully upgraded it gets 5 152mm guns on a broadside, um, 8 guns in total. Uh, they do fire fairly slowly, only 5 rounds per minute, but this is more than made up for by the 13% chance of fire when firing high explosives. The Chikuma also gets the longest range of the tier 2 cruisers, at 10.3 kilometers it can fire 1 kilometer further than the Chester and 1.3 kilometers further than the Dresden, which can be a significant advantage. Especially when you realize that the Chikuma is also the fastest of the tier 2 cruisers. The top speed of 26 knots is only slightly faster than the competition, but it does give you an edge in managing your distance from your targets. Its turning radius and relative time are decent, although the Chester is slightly better in this respect. In terms of armour and survivability, the Chikuma does well for its tier. Um, it's a typical protected cruiser in that above the waterline the Chikuma only has very thin armour, at most 20mm. Well, except for the conning tower, but we'll, that's a small target so you won't hit it often. Uh, that means that AP shells that hit above the waterline will most likely overpenetrate. Uh, the Citadel is under the waterline and is protected by a 40mm armoured deck. Uh, this will be very difficult to penetrate simply because it is normally at a very acute angle to the incoming shells. So all in all the Chikuma is fairly well protected against armour piercing shells. However there isn't much to stop high explosive shells from doing damage. The Chikuma does however get the most hit points at this tier, although the other cruisers aren't far behind. And so yeah, as I said earlier, there's nothing bad about the, Chikuma, about the Chikuma, and the large number of guns and able to fire at long range with a high chance of causing a fire is definitely a big plus, and in my mind it definitely outweighs the high rate of fire of the Dresden. Statistically speaking, I did very well in the Chikuma. I played 78 games, winning almost 72% of the time. On average, I did 34,000 damage and got 1.7 kills per game. Despite those stats, I didn't really have a strategy when playing the Chikuma. 
Um, I almost never fired armor piercing simply because a 13% chance of fire is so powerful you don't really ever want to forego it. Otherwise all I did was focus fire with my team and or try to eliminate the enemies with the lowest health first. Uh, the Chikuma does very well when focus firing because of its high fire chance which will often force your opponents to use a repair which you or your allies could then exploit. Um, when outnumbered, the Chikuma is very good at harassing enemies. Um, it has the range and speed to make withdrawing a viable option, and it can continue to do a lot of damage while withdrawing. And your opponents, as I said, will often struggle to keep up, so you can try and minimize the number of enemies that can fire you at you at one time. Um, it can also go in very close, very effectively, just because it has high survivability. And its guns do do a decent damage output. Um, I believe the Dresden does beat it on DPM, but you have the fire chance and the survivability, so hopefully you'll knock out a few modules and do more fire damage. So not all the Takuma is just a ship that there's no situation that's really bad for it. I think it does do best as a long-range harasser, which is the kind of role you see me playing right now. I suppose 8.5 is a really medium range, but. It's accurate enough to hit the enemies at this range, it's got the fire chance, which especially when you're firing at battleships is what you really want to do. There we go, another fire. And it's got the speed to get out of here if the situation starts turning dicey. And of course, as I said, you get to control the range of the engagement, so you just kind of pick the one you feel comfortable, and 8 kilometers, 9 kilometers is probably about right, possibly a bit longer if you're against... Well, if you're against something like a Dresden, I'd like to go a bit longer so it can't shoot back at me. But otherwise this is a good range where you're going to get, well, 5 hits out of 5 there. Just do consistent damage and try and minimise the risks you're taking. When fighting against the Chikuma, I would normally fire high explosive and aim for the gun deck. Uh, the main armament is fairly easy to knock out and reducing the firepower of the Chikuma is pretty essential. Um, also aiming for the gun deck on this ship is pretty effective because shots that go high will probably be caught by its smokestacks and the shots that go low there's a good chance that they'll actually go down and destroy the engine of the Chikuma so all in all it's a good spot to aim for I found. Um, if I were in my Dresden or the Emden by contrast I would still fire armor piercing and I'd aim slightly above the waterline below the smokestacks um, just because there the armor is 15 to 20 millimeters thick um, which means your shells will probably penetrate the first layer of armor, but won't penetrate the armor on the other side, so you'll do full armor piercing penetration damage. Um, however, it's not consistent. When I was trying that out, well, when I do that, it's the occasional bounce or the occasional over penetration, but I found that's the best way to do decent damage to the Chikuma if you're in an Emden or a Dresden. Uh, the Chikuma is fairly agile, so getting long to medium range torpedoes to hit one is a bit of luck. Well, really you just want to find one that's not paying attention to you and won't dodge at all. Um, closing in with the Chikuma for a short range torpedo attack can be very dangerous if the Chikuma is paying attention to your approach. As I said, it's fairly maneuverable, so if it is paying attention it should be able to dodge torpedoes that have been dropped even at very short range. And it's got the firepower to really do a fair bit of damage to you if it can get its guns on target. I suppose that's all I really have to say about the Chikuma. It's just a very powerful ship at this tier. Very flexible, there's nothing that's poor at, it's good in all situations. The only situation where it's actually... I wouldn't want to be in the Chikuma is fighting against a tier 3 ship like you see me doing now, or against a Dresden at point blank range. Even then, a Dresden's got less hit points, less fire chance, so even then a Chikuma could possibly beat a Dresden if they were just sitting next to each other and blazing away. Anyway, this game, it's actually still got a while to go. Um, my team's losing quite badly, I just got my second kill, a St. Louis class cruiser. Basically the only reason I supply, survived against that St. Louis was I was angled quite heavily away from it, so a fair portion of its shots were missing. Um, it's another advantage of the Chikuma, it's got pretty decent firing arcs. Uh, the Chesters are better, but it does allow you to strike a fairly acute angle and survive. And there's kill number three, a Chester, which 
I reckon it's the weakest cruiser and it's not really a challenge to kill one at any time. But, well we're one ship down, we're slightly behind on points, but fortunately for us these last two enemy ships on this flank didn't push forward with that Chester, which means that while I killed the Chester I didn't take any damage from these two, and its shots are falling well short. Basically I'm hanging back here for a bit, I've got low hit points and I want these guys to come to me so that that battleship off, well, behind me will be able to um, support me effectively when we engage. Just waiting for the battleship to come within range. Almost there. Here we go. Uh, I should also mention the detectability of the Chikuma is also pretty good. Um, you can't stealth fire or anything like that, but you will basically always be able to get the first salvo off just because you won't be detected by the time you fire. I mean, unless you've been spotted by Destroyer, but we'll ignore that for now. I'm firing away at the battleship here, um, mainly because it's an easier target to hit at these kind of ranges. And I also really want to destroy it because it's probably the bigger threat to my allied battleship, which I'm expecting to join the fight at any moment, but I haven't seen any shells come in yet. I say easier target hits. You see, well, I miss most of my broadside there against that battleship. Fortunately, I'm just weaving backwards and forwards a bit, which is enough to throw the aim of that cruiser off. And it looks like the battleship's actually given up on me and is now aiming at my allied battleship. So hopefully I can do enough damage here to... Well, essentially we're just focusing firing... Focus firing down this battleship now. Oh, I actually took a hit from that cruiser there. Fortunately I can't take very many more hits at all. But just need to start a few more fires on this battleship. But because it's turning away, I'm actually going to... Um, well, it's going to be out of my range very soon. So I switched to the St. Louis. It's also an important target, and it's actually also fairly easy to hit, and there we go, two and a half thousand damage with four hits and a fire. A few more broadsides like that, and that'll be the end of the St. Louis. And yeah, the enemy battleship's turned right away, so I'm going to have to actually chase after if I want to hit it. And the St. Louis is going to basically harass me the whole way if I do try to. And, well, we're down to three ships on my team versus six on the enemy still. Only 858 with that broadside. You need a bit better than that. St. Louis kind of outclasses me. It's just got a lot more guns. Oh, but there's a second fire. But it doesn't have the maneuverability that I do. And it's actually pretty comparable in terms of range. So while I can pretty consistently hit it at this range, I say as I miss an entire broadside, it's going to have a lot harder job hitting me because I can dodge more effectively. And I think I've also got the better fire chance. Actually, I don't think I know I've got the better fire chance. So in the long run, those fires are going to do a lot more damage to it than its shells are going to do to me. And there we go, the battleship fired some shots in and managed to get the kill there. But that battleship has run well away, so it's going to be a while before I can chase up and catch it. But I really want to, since at the moment my allied battleship is fighting it one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm watching the center channel here because I'm expecting some enemies to pop through it. I'm also trying to keep my distance from it because I want to... Basically I don't want to be ambushed by them coming around the corner at close range. And when something spotted me, it's another St. Louis. And it's got lots of hit points as well. And at this range it probably can hit me fairly effectively. Yep, it set me on fire. I put the fire out though, so I've got a few hit points left. And I've just got to try and gain as much distance from it as possible. And well, my run is knocked out, which means I'm not going to be dodging. I do manage to start a fire on the St. Louis. Oh, and I get the Confederate medal there. And more hits, but I'm taking damage. Oh, and I'm turning into it, which is odd, because my red is destroyed straight ahead, so... Must be a replay get glitch there, because it really does look like I'm turning in a circle. Fortunately, the St. Louis is ignoring me now. I'm not at all sure why, because I'm basically a one-shot for it. Oh, and the chest is showing up behind it. Um, this is the kind of situation where I wouldn't want to fight a Chester, and the Chester is firing at me, nothing I can do to dodge it. And that's my death. 
and that enemy uh, allied cruiser is going to die pretty soon. So this one's a loss for us. But as I said, well, basically I only lost one in three games, and quite often there were losses like this where I personally did pretty all right getting a Confederate medal. But the Chikuma is just a very powerful ship, and it's actually really easy to do very well in it. Just as I said, angle your armor when you have to. Well, it's not really angling your armor, it's minimizing your profile when you have to focus firing, kind of managing the range to your targets. Um, and otherwise, it's just keep your guns going and try and get as many fires as you can. I should also mention that, of course, one big advantage when you're using high explosive to start fires is to, of course, shift your aim away from where you've already started the fire. So if you've got one, say, a fire on the bow, you move it back to aim at the superstructure to start a couple of fires there, then move back to the stern to start more fires just because you're not going to start a fire where there's already a fire burning. But anyway, that is the Takuma, very powerful ship. I hope you've enjoyed this video or found it useful or informative, and I'll see you all next time.